After a big performance for Lithuania in the FIBA Eurobasket tournament, did Jonas Valanciunas get injured? I got his status and Pelicans Eurobasket updates in today's Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Tuesday, took yesterday off, we're just shifting, it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be the podcast this week, so thank you for joining me, hope you, if you had a long weekend, enjoyed the long weekend. It was nice to mix it up a little bit here. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all. We'll be back to five days a week really, really soon, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team, right? The season is like around the corner. We are really getting there. We've got uh, Media Day later this month, which I'm really excited about. It's just going to be a fun time. We're excited. It's probably the most hyped Pelican season we've had in a while, and of course, we'll get into an episode based solely around that as well. Okay, so today, Jonas Valanciunas, is he hurt? And he's been playing really well for Lithuania, but you also have two other Pelicans in there. You also have Carlo Matkovic, second-round pick who played for the team in Summer League briefly, and of course, Billy Hernan Gomez. We're going to look at all three of them today. So let's start with Jonas. The good news, no, he isn't really hurt. If you saw the, the video that was going around on Twitter of him like walking really funny um, after a press conference, he got up after a double overtime loss to um, Germany. He got up and couldn't move really well, and everyone was like, oh, no, that can't be anything good. It was just muscle cramps. He's been playing a lot of minutes over there for Lithuania, and it seemed to really kind of catch up to it. In their three group phase games against Slovenia, France, and Germany, he's played 31, 32, and 35 minutes. So he's been playing a big load for them, and I think it was just kind of all those games and everything catching up to him. But he said he's okay. He'll be fine. No big deal. Had a rest day. Feeling good. So no big deal. Shouldn't be any impact on him to start the season. And that game against Germany kind of reminds you, dude's good. Like, dude's a good basketball player. There's no doubting that. I think he, among Pelicans fans too, is an underrated player. On basically a $15 million a year contract, what he can give you is incredibly solid. And in that double overtime loss to Germany, he scored 34 points, had 14 rebounds, Five assists as well. He was 10 of 14 from the field, 10 of 15 overall. He got to the free throw line 17 times, made 14 of them. The previous two games against Slovenia, um, he scored, where where the number just go? Nine points and 12 rebounds. And then against France, where in the first two games, I don't think he played particularly great. 15 points and eight rebounds. Keep this in mind that he's also doing it with Demonis Sabonis out there. Two centers. And he's still able to go out and have that kind of impact. That should make you really excited for this Pelican season because, yes, he can also play next to Zion Williamson. And that's kind of your big takeaway from this, right? Don't forget that he is a good player, especially offensively and on the boards. He's a very good offensive rebounder. He's above average to a point of being a good defensive rebounder as well he can't defend on the perimeter but he can play drop coverage just enough and he's not a rim protector but there's some deterrence there and he can get you blocks and play down low but more importantly he's just a physical guy right like his move is drop his shoulder into a guy then go with the hook shot kind of over them to get some easy points he carried the pelicans in some games last season right especially against the Clippers when he would just launch threes and make them all. But it's a useful player to have. I don't think he's going to be playing 35 minutes this season. Last year was a career high in terms of minutes per game at a shade over 30, 30.3. 
But let's not pretend that he is not good. And when people are like, this guy's terrible. And I thought he actually was okay against the Phoenix Suns. There were a couple games he struggled with, certainly. But he also really did keep them in there and played very physical at times against DeAndre Ayton when they really needed him to be able to do that. This is a guy who scored 39 points in a game last season. 32. He had three 30-plus point games. Those are, those are good. Two of them were wins. One was a loss. He can step up and carry the team, you know, if Brandon Ingram isn't feeling it that night or someone is out hurt. He's not the one, two, or three option for this team, but it's a really useful player to have on that contract. And you don't really have another, and we talked about this. I talked about this in the show of like, who's the most valuable non-star for this team? Is it Trey Murphy, right? Is it Jonas Valanciunas? Because... You don't have a ton of other quality centers. We'll get to Billy Hernan Gomez here in a minute. I think he's fine, but he's not nearly on the level that Valanciunas is. You know, neither is Jackson Hayes at the center spot. So when you have a guy that can play this well and carry you in those minutes and you need a center for 48 minutes because every position plays 48 minutes, Valanciunas, it's a good option to have. It's almost, you know, it's Lanyap. It's a luxury in a sense that he can step up and he's very reliable. And I, I don't think he'll play over 30 minutes per game this season. I think, you know, around 28 is probably the sweet spot for him. You could see him getting a little bit tired as the season went on. But keeping him in those, like, high 20s, 27, 28 minutes, I think is a real good spot for him to be in. And when you see him playing with another center in Sabonis, it's like, yeah, he should be fine next to Zion Williamson. And, of course, we know Zion played with Steven freaking Adams. So he can definitely play with Valanciunas, who's better offensively than Steven Adams is. Though Adams might be underrated offensively to a degree as well. So it's it's great to see him succeeding. He might not be advancing past the group stage here. They don't really, uh, Lithuania doesn't control their own fate anymore. But hey, it's nice to see him with a 34-point performance like that, um, impressing everyone, kind of getting his name back out there. Again, he's done very, very well for it. By the way, he has the game high in terms of points when I'm recording this with 34. That's the highest anyone scored in the group stages for the FIBA Eurobasket tournament so far. So we'll see if he keeps going or if Lithuania is going to be out. There's a couple other Pelicans players in there, including Billy Hernan Gomez. And what is this, what is how he's playing in his role there kind of say about the Pelicans and the roster construction? We're going to look at that coming up next. And then, of course, Carlo Makovic will get into him in the third segment in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by Built Bar. If you haven't tried the Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of the best tasting protein bar out there. Guess what? There's a new flavor, delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. I'm going to introduce you right now to your new favorite. The cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks on top, like like out of the ice cream, basically, but just in a protein bar. And of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. It's all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. I actually had another protein bar the other day. I was out with some friends. One of them had them or out, you know, like running and doing all stuff. And he tossed me one. And I ate it and it was covered in chocolate. It had a nice, like good looking flavor on it and everything. And it tasted awful. It had this like waxy consistency, kind of had a waxy taste to it. And I couldn't finish it. It was miserable. Just, just take, eat, go buy the protein bar that's the best one. And that's what Built is. So run to Built.com to snag a box for you, the family, for anyone, your friends, so you don't give them chalky, awful tasting, waxy protein bars. All their Built bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of additional health benefits. So eat something that tastes good and is good for you. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKEDON15, LOCKED ON15, the promo code has changed, to get 15 percent off your order again use promo code locked on 15 at built.com and thank you for making locked on pelicans your first listen today and every day we're here monday through friday for y'all breaking down everything you want to know about the team we're giving you the euro basket updates today so subscribe wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Tell a friend about the show. Leave a five-star review with a comment. You can now do that on Spotify, of course. And let's get ready. Let's get ready for the season. And number one thing you can do, comment down below on YouTube. Number one thing, it takes two seconds to do. You can even simply just say, hi. A lot of you just write comment. 
I love it too. Appreciate it. Number one thing you can do, comment on YouTube and it helps support the show. We don't have a Patreon. There's no paywall, right? We're not here whenever I feel like recording. It's a consistent schedule. We're here Monday through Friday. You know what you're going to get. Support the show by commenting on YouTube. All right. You're a basket. It's been kind of fun to watch. You know, I, it's it's still slightly different from the NBA that it's it's tough to get into. And I only have so much bandwidth for it all. But it's nice to see that the Pelicans have three guys out there that are contributing, that are playing. And another one that is out there and is starting every single game so far for Spain is Billy Hernan Gomez. And... When you watched him the other night, he has played pretty well. Against Georgia, he was the player of the game for Spain in their win. He has been very consistent so far in the Eurobasket tournament. Against Bulgaria, 16 points, uh, 6 rebounds, 4 assists. Against Georgia, 14 rebounds, 7 uh, boards, just 1 assist. And then against Belgium, a loss, 18 points, 4 rebounds. So 16, 14, 18. An average of 16 points per game in the starting lineup um, and giving you just enough boards, 5.7 per game. He's been good. Like He's been good. This is what Billy Hernan Gomez is, right? You know he's going to go out there and he's going to get you somewhere between 10 and like 16 points, 18 points per game. And he'll probably get you about eight boards, maybe close to 10, just depending. He is remarkably consistent in those two areas. And that's a good player to have on the team, right? Like that's a very useful guy to have, especially when you know what you're going to get. He doesn't defend or he's not. It's not that he doesn't defend. He's not a good defender, right? He can struggle at times shooting at the rim. He has some bad games, um, particularly against rim protectors where he really struggles against Evan Mobley against Cleveland. He was two for 12, right? We've seen some games where he's three of 11 for a center to shoot that poorly. It's not a great thing to see. You know, he's got a number of games shooting under 50%. But, but again, those are not the norm for him. So you have an idea of what you're going to get. So he can go out and he's going to be able to give you a good number of points, a good number of rebounds. Now, I don't think this means you should overrate him. The opposite of what we've done with Jonas Valanciunas, where people say this guy's great, he could start. He should not be starting at all for this team. It's just a useful guy to have. The problem is the Pelicans have guys that can go out and score and get boards, right? They have uh, Jackson Hayes can do that for you, you know, without the defense for the most part, too. You know, you could move other guys. You have Larry Nance Jr. that could play some of the backup five, the backup four. So where does that leave a guy like Billy or her name Gomez? And I do think that... Per- kind of makes him a little bit of an odd man out, but he's also kind of the heart and soul at times of this Pelicans team. They love him. He's not playing. He's still a good teammate, even though he wants to be out there and be playing, right? You love a guy that kind of has that sort of mentality, that sort of attitude. So I don't think it means they should look to really trade Billy Hernan Gomez or anything like that. I think kind of for what his role is and what he does with this team, I dig it. I love it. It's fine. You would like though to still see a more defensive minded center come into this roster and get some of those backup five minutes so that the Pelicans can throw a different look and Billy Hernan Gomez is not that but look he's starting for Spain he's starting for Spain that's not a bad position to be in and a bad player to have it's not the Spain of old they're kind of retooling and kind of going through some growing pains as their like kind of golden generation has moved on but he's still starting he's still playing incredibly well or, or solid enough, let's say, that counts for something, right? Like, that definitely counts for something. And I think you're seeing him really be, you know, a solid backup enough center. I can live with that on the team. He's not making a lot of money. He's not going to be playing tons of minutes. Is he somewhat expendable? Yeah, I think so. Or does having him make a guy like Jackson Hayes more expendable, right? If you don't want to pay him in the future, knowing, yeah, you know, he's talented. Maybe we'll, he, he explodes this year. Maybe he doesn't. If he struggles, they look to move him, knowing that you're not going to really miss a beat with Billy Hernan Gomez getting some of those minutes from him. 
or splitting, you know, Jackson Hayes minutes between him and giving a couple more to Larry Nance Jr. or something along those lines. So it kind of is an interesting look into the Pelicans roster construction, I think, and what they do with some of those backup center spots, those backup center minutes, backup power forward spots, not, not Hernan Gomez, but you have Larry Nance Jr. there. You have Jackson Hayes there too. I know a lot of y'all love Jackson Hayes, still think really highly of him. Well, it's a good problem to have too many of these guys, I think, to a certain degree. I don't think any of them are elite. I would be fine moving on from him. But nice to see Billy, who's kind of the heart and soul of this Pelicans team at times, guy everyone loves, succeeding and doing well for Spain. And I'm sure they're all really rooting for him and really happy for him. And and Jonas Valanciunas, as well as Carlo Matkovic, who just had an incredible game. An incredible game. It, he didn't miss a shot. Let's talk about him coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. And thank you for making Locked on Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. We're looking at the guys playing in Eurobasket. I've got a, a slightly different show probably tomorrow unless some news breaks. Not that I'm expecting any. That's not a hint at anything. Um, we'll switch gears a little bit tomorrow. I do this once a year. I think we're going to do it tomorrow. Then we'll maybe take some listener questions. Maybe do a live show for Friday. We'll see. Get can it kind of get back into the swing of things here. Uh, so thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today. Every day, subscribe. Comment down below on YouTube. And now for your second listen. It's opening week, week one of the NFL season. Go check out Locked On Saints. You probably already have because Ross Jackson is the freaking man. But go check out Locked On Saints if you haven't. He's there Monday through Friday breaking it down. You see him all over TV and everything too. Dude's moved here. He's on the beat. He's covering the team. He's just really good. He's so good. Go check out Locked On Saints for your second listen today. All right, one more Pelican player in FIBA, in Eurobasket, and that is Carlo Makovic, their second-round player who's going to be playing overseas for at least one year. You know, quiet first two games against Greece and then um, Great Britain, England, did not play much. First game, seven minutes, two points. Okay. Second game, four points, 16 minutes, didn't do a ton, right? And then against Estonia in the third game, 19 minutes, all coming off the bench, by the way, eight of eight, eight of eight from the field, one of one from free throw, 20, uh, sorry, 17 points. Those are good numbers. Those are really good numbers. Not missing a shot. He looked like an NBA player, didn't he, in summer league? He looked like an NBA player in summer league. And it's, it's that kind of game that reminds you why the Pelicans took a flyer on him. And it sounds like made him a promise because he was going to withdraw his name from the NBA draft. But it sounds like the Pelicans made him a promise they would draft him in the second round. They saw something in him. And then he goes out and he does this. What was the rest of the NBA potentially missing? This is a guy they'll look to bring over, you know, not this season, maybe not even next season. It, this could be two, three years down the line. But it shows there's a lot of potential there. He looked like an NBA big man, like a small ball five in a sense, right? Not shooting threes right now, but he's got he's springy. He can get up and he can go out and he can score. And you got to like that out of a player like that. For a reserve big man that you're going to be able to bring over cheaply, that's going to give you points and rebounds, you know, in the future, there could be a lot of potential there. He's got some switchability too um, with very good size and pretty decent athleticism. So I think overall... This is a guy that is worth keeping an eye on when he's playing overseas and doing a number of different things because I think the Pelicans are very high on him. They want to bring him back over, and we liked what we saw out of him in Summer League. So I'm hopeful that we'll be able to see him continue to play in the future, and this is a guy worth keeping an eye on. Eight of eight, right? Like That doesn't happen by accident. That is not something that that is just a complete fluke that is never going to happen. These guys know what they're doing. Makovic clearly has a lot of talent, and that's why the Pelicans look to draft him or did draft him in the second round. Cool performance, good game from him, um, and that was a lot of fun. I'm excited for what he could do. It's those type of performances that are like, oh, that's, that's a really good thing, and Croatia won that game, so willed them to kind of victories. The leading scorer for Croatia in that one, second leading scorer in the game, Overall, he was great. Um, and hopefully he'll continue that. And maybe you'll see him on the Pelicans sooner rather than later, if that is the case. 
All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans, the Eurobasket update from all three of your Pelicans that are out there playing right now. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I'll be back with you all tomorrow. We'll probably switch gears up a little bit. Um, kind of a fun show on media stuff, so we'll get into that. And of course, now, for your second listen, go check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022. To an eight episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. Local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, plus the betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets. That dude just picks winners. All combining into one ultimate NFL preview. Search for the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2020 on your or 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison at Nola Jake on Twitter, and we'll be back with you all tomorrow.